In this study, just one single injection of 150 milligrams of nandrolone, just one single injection, that's it, just 150 milligrams, just one injection, individuals still had metabolite production Hey guys, so I wanna do a video on testosterone recovery time or recovery time from cycle. I get a lot of messages and emails and Instagram DMs from people who have just come off either TIT or a cycle and they ask me time and time again in various different words, but it's always generally the same gist. How long will it take me to recover my natural testosterone production after coming off? And will my PCT make any difference? In this video, I'm gonna go into the science of how long a recovery can take and it does depend on what compounds you're taking, how long but let's go into the science now to try and answer this question of how long does it take to recover your HPT axis functioning, your testosterone production naturally, and will you ever actually get back to baseline like what your baseline was maybe when you were 18, 19 years old, if you've done a long cycle and say you're now like in your mid 20s, mid 30s, mid 40s, let's go into it now. So one study I'm gonna use is a study that looked at testosterone recovery times in men who have taken anabolic steroids or TRT, and the study aimed to investigate the recovery of the male reproductive and interestingly not just the reproductive system but cardiac function which we know can be decreased on anabolic steroids after these men stopped androgens compared to healthy non-users and in the study they said androgen abuse i'm never really a fan of saying that somebody abuses steroids the choice you make to use steroids or to do a cycle is your choice and i just think labeling someone as an abuser in the research studies can give a negative connotation and not make whoever is trying to come off a pretty heavy cycle it can be you know very difficult to come off this and it can make them feel pretty terrible if mentally they're now seen as an abuser but anyway this study looked at healthy non-users versus people that have come off there were 41 current androgen users 31 past users that had stopped use more than three months ago in fact an average of 300 days since their past use so you know close to like a year since they've used anything and then 21 people who had never touched steroids in their life and they basically went through different types of cardiac tests blood tests semen samples ultra sounds of their testicles, body comp analysis, and general history and examination, all that jazz. And here are some of the key findings, and then I will go into what I think about this. So in terms of reproductive function, we know obviously this is not a big surprise that the current users had obviously suppressed LH, suppressed FSH levels, suppressed semen volume, lower testicular volume, and higher estrogen, higher testosterone, higher DHT, all these things that come with obviously using steroids. What was interesting is they didn't really find a difference between the past users and the people who had never touched steroids in their life. In fact, past users did not significantly differ from non-users in terms of reproductive function, except for slightly lower testicular volume and slightly lower SHBG. This is actually quite interesting. I actually do find with a lot of men that I work with, FSH, which is very indicative of reproductive, the more reproductive side of the HPT axis, FSH seems to recover a lot better than LH in a lot of men who have used either TRT or steroids. However, in this study, they actually found a different result to what I just said. They actually found that reproductive hormones such as AMH, and LH recovered quicker, 7.3 months for AMH and 10.7 months for luteinizing hormone recovery on average than for SFH and sperm variables, which took around 14 months on average. In terms of cardiac function, this is no surprise again. Current users had impaired cardiac function, including a higher left ventricle mass. Obviously the heart and left ventricle will grow under anabolic usage and reduced longitudinal strain, including some left ventricle dysfunction. Current users had lower left ventricle ejection fractions. Now for past users, their cardiac function tests generally came back to normal after cessation of use. And there was no significant difference between groups in terms of coronary artery calcification. Now, whether these users were using heavy compounds that can have significant dyslipidemic effects was not really known, but some of the compounds listed in the study include oxandrolone, anovar, trenbolone, aldenone, masteron, for example. So they were using some pretty heavy anabolic drugs. So it is interesting that the coronary artery calcium score weren't significantly different. In terms of the lipids though, this was different. Current users had significantly lower HDL values, we know this, and past users seemed to recover back to baseline. But overall, what was the most interesting here was actually the time frame of recovery. So the time frame for past users who had used anabolic steroids or even just testosterone to recover their HPT axis was in this study, six to 18 months. And the study and what is seen in a lot of guys who come to me with their blood work, LH and FSH seem to be the primary markers to 
assess how well these men are recovering the HPT axis functioning, but the longer duration of androgen use as reported by men in the study was significantly associated with a longer time to recovery. And not just this, but in my research and in my experience, men who use significantly heavier compounds such as 19 nors and 19 nor derivatives, like for example, 19 nor testosterone, nandrolone, these compounds in particular seem to be incredibly suppressive for the HPT axis. And the reason is the metabolites of 19 nors can take forever to get out of your system. In this study, just one single injection of 150 milligrams of nandrolone, just one single injection, that's it, just 150 milligrams, just one injection, individuals still had metabolite production and metabolites found in their blood and their urine, basically metabolites still being detected after nine months. In fact, 45% of the individuals had some form of detection of nandrolone metabolites after nine months of just one injection. And these metabolites are suppressive of LH. And this is why 19 nors are so suppressive and why some guys who are like, I've taken 19 nors, you know, 18 months ago, I don't understand why my LH and my testosterone is still so low. It's because these 19 nors can be incredibly suppressive of your HPT axis. And the fact that this study after just 150 milligrams, just one single injection of 150 milligrams of nandrolone can still have metabolites being detected nine months after in, in almost half of the men studied is crazy to me. And it's just proof that these 19 nors can be so suppressive of your HPT axis and why there is a huge difference and a huge variation in how well you can recover your HPT axis functioning. And there's a big difference between someone who has, for example, just taken, you know, 70 milligrams of TRT for six months and they want to come off versus someone who's been on heavy 19 nor derivatives like Trenbolone, 19 nor testosterone itself, Nandrolone for like three years in a heavy cycle with testosterone added, that man is going to have a much harder time of recovering. And to answer the question at the start of this video, can I recover my natural function to where I was when I was, you know, 20 years old? Say for example, you're 20 years old, you have a testosterone production of 600 nanograms per deciliter, you know, smack bang in the middle of the, maybe a little bit high, let's say 600 to 700 nanograms per deciliter, a high healthy natural level of testosterone that a young male should be producing. And these men come to me and they're saying, you know, can I ever get back to that level, which I was at? There's just so much background and context that goes into answering that question. And some of the variables are, what have you used? How long have you used it? What compounds, you know, like I said, testosterone versus trenbolone is going to be a huge difference there. And then how old you are, young men are going to bounce back a lot quicker in terms of their LH and their FSH and their HPT axis functioning. That's say, for example, someone who's done this when they're 38 and they're now 48 and they want to get off. But there are so many variables. And to answer that question properly, it's really, yes, there's a potential, but it's going to take time and PCTs may help slightly. But one of the most undervalued things in HPT axis recovery is time. So many men come to me after three months and they're like, you know, my testosterone hasn't bounced back. What am I doing wrong? And yet they've just come off using Nandrolone after three months and they're wondering why their LH level is still low and their testosterone is say 250 nanograms per deciliter. The Nandrolone metabolites are still in their system suppressing their LH values. So it really depends on what you use. And if you are trying to come off, it's really important that you just understand some of these variables that are going to either complicate or make it easier for your HBT axis to recover. And there may be a chance, unfortunately, that you just never get back to where you were naturally. If you've done a lot of cellular damage to your HBT axis, I have some theories about this I've documented on my channel that when you use anabolic steroids and TRT, you actually undergo lighting cell damage and your cellular processes in your entire HPT axis actually start to die off and not be used. So recovering them can take a lot of time. But if you are interested in learning more, check out my channel. And I thought I would answer this question because testosterone recovery time can take a long time, but being patient and understanding the science of the HPT axis is going to be critical in how you actually come off safely. As this study showed, it can take a lot of time. And that is one of the most undervalued things is just remembering that it can take time anywhere from six to 18 months with some of these compounds like nandrolone, for example, they are going to complicate the process a lot more than just testosterone. So understanding some of these variables is key. Guys, thank you so much for the support. That is a little science about answering the question, how long does it take to recover natural testosterone production after stopping TRT or cycle? I will see you in the next video.